Hey, insurance. Uh, I'm Tony Cañas, Chief Motivational Officer at Insurance Nerds and uh, PNC Client Advisor at the Jacobson Group. And I am dressed in the monkey suit today uh, because I am in Boston for the uh, PIA annual meeting. This is a kind of a formal meeting. Uh, and uh, or uh, I think they're, they're, it's now called the APCIA annual meeting, but anyway, it's, it's a, a, a bit of a, of a forum meeting. So, 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 uh, so anyway, and I'm going to try to record a few episodes ahead. Uh, since I have a little time before my first meeting. Uh, anyway, today I want to talk to you about your resume because chances are your resume sucks or your resume stinks. Okay. Uh, so especially if you have been at the same company, <coughs> state farm people, uh, if you've been at the same company, whatever company that might be, for a long time, chances are that your resume is not great. And even if you've been uh, changing companies somewhat often, like I like I have, chances are your resume is not great. So so let's go over the basics of what makes a solid resume. So first, uh, key thing, and and by the way, I really want the some replies from from hiring managers and other people in hr and and, and uh, other third-party recruiters to see if i'm right in this i would love to get some conversation going on whether my advice is right my advice is largely based on manager tools uh resume advice and i'll, I'll link it on the video but basically uh, the key guiding principle is the resume should should show me what you've done not tell me what what you've done and uh, also, it needs to be that one page. I, unless you've truly been in the industry for 30 years, I, we want your, your resume down to one page. And the reason for that is because at, at every large carrier or almost every large carrier, um, the, or your resume is going into an applicant tracking system or an ATS, and the applicant tracking system will look for keywords and it, it doesn't like uh, multi-page resumes. Okay, so we gotta get it down to one page, and I know it's hard, but we gotta get it down to one page. At the top, what you want is your name, comma, your designation. So, so if you have your CPCU, right, Tony Kindness, comma, CPCU, maybe comma, MBA. You don't want to list all six of them or whatever, but you do want CPCU if you have it, or CIC or CLU and MBA if you, if you have it. Then in the next line, you want city, state, and zip, not your full address. We don't care about your full address for now, just city, state, and zip, your cell phone number, and your personal email address. Don't use your your work email address if you're applying externally and don't use your personal email address if you're applying internally. So, so if you're applying internally, use your, your work email address. If you're applying externally, use your, your personal email address and your cell phone number. Okay, so one page, not more than one page. The, uh, I hate summary sections or skill sections because again, I, I want your resume to, to show me what you've done, not tell me. Who, who you are, right? Show me. So, so I, I don't like skill sections or summary sections unless you are attempting to change functions or even change industries. Uh, but if, if this move is, that you're applying for is a, a pretty, it, it's, a, it's a lateral or straight up move, not a radical change, uh, then I would highly recommend, uh, I would highly, <laughs> Highly re recommend no summary section, no skill section. Start right with, with the section called professional experience, not work experience, not work history, professional experience. And basically you want your last three to five jobs, jobs that you that you had 20 years ago, we don't care, okay? And, and what, you, what, you, what you need is company, job title, city, dates, okay? The start date, end date for this particular job, and we don't want a, uh, the bullet points shouldn't be the job description. We can figure out the job description as long as the job title makes sense. The bullet points should be your accomplishments and your accomplishments should be quantified with numbers if at all possible. And we understand that you might not have exact numbers, uh, but quantify them as, as best as you can. Show us what you accomplished in, in that job, not what your job duties were. That's what we care about, your accomplishments. Quantified if at all possible. If you don't have exact numbers, guesstimating, ethically of course, uh, is, is acceptable. Also, if you are applying internally, you must use the exact, exact job title you had in, the, in that position. If you're applying externally, 
then you, sh you are ethically allowed to use a different job title if the internal job title doesn't make sense to the rest of the industry. The, the perfect example is a fire adjuster or a fire underwriter or, or, or a fire um, manager at State Farm. Fire is a very old fashioned word for what the rest of the industry calls property. So if you're applying, if you're a State Farm person and you've been in the fire department and you're applying externally, you wanna use the correct name that the rest of the industry is gonna understand. So property manager, property claims adjuster, property underwriter. Uh, same thing for, uh, for account managers at, at, uh, at Travelers. The rest of the industry calls you underwriters. So you should use the title underwriter so the rest of the industry can understand. Now, if you're applying internally, then keep your title as is. Again, ethically, what I mean is don't give yourself a promotion that you haven't earned, okay? So, so uh, then, uh, so, so the, your newest, basically what you want is your, your jobs to show growth, right? That's what we, what we wanna see. So, so your last job should have about five bullet points. And again, the bullet points should not be, your job description should be your accomplishments quantified if at all possible. You, you're allowed to guesstimate on, on, the, on, on the numbers if you don't have exact numbers, uh, it's understandable. So, so the last job should be about five points, about five bullet points. Then, and then the other jobs should be four, maybe three. The last of the, of the three or four jobs that you list should have three bullet points at most. What you don't want is your job from 10 years ago having ten, seven bullet points and your job from right now having three bullet points because you wanna show growth. Also, all prior jobs, all jobs that you are no longer at should be in past tense and your current job should be in present tense uh, when it comes to, to, to the bullet points. Then after your professional experience, you want an education section, and your education section should list your college degree. If you have a master's degree also, uh, list that. Uh, high school's probably not needed unless you are a brand new college grad and you went to like a fancy prep school, then you might wanna list high school, otherwise no. For all your education, list your GPA if it's about a 3.4, 3.5, otherwise there's no need to list it. And in the education section, what, what you need is the school, the degree, the dates that you were there, uh, and the major. Okay, so, so in my case, my resume shows 2009 to 2011, Iowa State University, MBA. Uh, and then the next one shows 2002 to 2006, Iowa State University, Bachelor of Science in Management Information Systems. Uh, neither of those have GPAs because I wasn't a great student, so I didn't have a 3.5 GPA, although I got close in my MBA. And then I also list my, my, my designations. If I can fit them, it might have to go in two columns in order, in order to fit them. Uh, and then finally, uh, in that same section education, you can also, if you've gained any honors, if, if you've uh, received, you know, uh, I don't know, recognition of some sort, you can call that education, that, that section education and awards, education and recognition, education and community involvement, whatever, include that in, the, in that piece. But ultimately what we're really interested in is your work experience, okay? Cover letters. Cover letters are going out of fashion. I've personally never used a cover letter in my life. Uh, the theory says that cover letters are useful if you're changing industries or doing a radical change. Uh, they, it might make sense if you're moving because of your spouse or because of family reasons and you don't really need relocation, it might make sense to use a cover letter explaining all of that. Um, but other than that, cover letters are, are falling out of fashion. Do not, do not, do not, do not put the very old fashioned line at the very bottom, references available upon request. Yes, we assume that references are available if, if, if we need references. Don't just put that in there. Uh, and that's about, about it. Uh, one last thing, uh, and again, I'd love to hear from our recruiters to, to see if, if this makes sense or not. But my understanding is that resumes to companies, one page. Resumes to third party recruiters, you're allowed multiple pages because you have a greater chance of matching the jobs. Uh, keep in mind, the, the ATS doesn't like multiple pages. Also send them in Word format, not PDF format. And uh, also keep keep in mind that, that uh, I'm so running out of time and I'm getting nervous here. <laughs> uh, the hiring manager, the HR manager, the research says will give six to 10 seconds to your resume at most. So. Bottom line up front, important stuff up, up front. Your resume is supposed to get you the interview. It's not supposed to, to get you the job. You get your job during the interview. TC out.